Hi, Blood Talk fans. Today is another episode of Bottomless Test Question Reviews. Just like before, give me a star for each correct answer and fire for each incorrect answer. And don't forget the heart if you like this series. Without further ado, let's get into it. Using a foot vein for a blood draw, A is prohibited, B pose no increased risk, C increased risk of blood clot, or D negligent. The answer is C increased risk of blood clot. Using a foot vein for a blood draw increases the risk of blood clots because circulation is often impaired in legs and feet. Especially in older and in diabetic patients, patients are usually increased risk of ulcerations of the site. Drawing blood from the foot and ankle should be avoided, although if neither arms can be used, the blood may be drawn from foot or ankle with physician's order. If a patient complains of feeling faint, and appear suddenly pale and shaky during a venous puncture, the initial response should be complete the blood draw, call for help, remove needle, or tell the patient to place head between legs. The answer is remove the needle. If a patient complains of feeling faint and appear to be suddenly pale and shaky during a venous puncture, the initial response should be to remove the needle. Because if the patient faints and falls, the needle could dislodge and result in trauma. As soon as the needle is removed, if the patient is sitting, you should assist the patient to put their head low between their legs. If the patient is in bed, the head of the bed should be lower. Give the patient some time to recuperate before another venous puncture is attempt. Which of the following is not an example of penalytical error? Incorrect patient ID on printed lab results, blood drawn from an endomatous arms, incorrect additive in specimens, or turning it left in place for three minutes. The answer is A. Incorrect patient's ID on printed lab results. An incorrect patient ID on a printed lab results is an example of a post analytical error because it occurred after the testing was completed. Pre-analytical errors occur before testing and may include a wide range of physiology factors that can affect the testing, including exercise, diet, age, drugs, environmental, altitude, position, gender, pregnancy status, and stress. Venom puncture factors include both the patient's conditions like burn, IV fluids, or technical errors such as blood draw from an endomatose arms or a tourniquet left on for too long. The primary purpose of therapeutic drugs monitoring is to identify optimal dosings, determine abuse of drugs, warn patients of the drugs, or prevent adverse effects? The answer is A, identify optimal doses. The primary purpose of therapeutic drugs monitoring is to identify optimal dosings by monitoring blood levels of the drugs at different periods. Testing is often done when the medication peaks, which means the highest blood level, usually one to two hours after oral medications or one hour after IM medications and 30 minutes after IV. The test is also done at the drop or the lowest level, which is usually around 15 minutes before the next scheduled dose. Based on the results, the doctor will adjust the doses or the frequency of the medications A specimen for a bilirubin test should be processed within 15 minutes, maintained at body temperature, protected from light, or shield immediately. The answer is C. Protected from light. Because light may cause the substance to be deteriorated. For example, the bilirubin levels may 
decrease by half within an hour if exposed to light. Other blood tests that require the specimens to be protected from light include vitamin A, vitamin B6, beta carotene, and porphyrins. Collecting tubes may also be immediately wrapped with aluminum foils or placed in specimens container that block light. Sometimes the phlebotomist also just wraps the tube in glove for convenience and also it works because it's protected from light. If a vinang puncture is required from an elderly patient with an obvious tremors of the upper extremity, the best solution is to ask for the patient to keep the arm still, ask a nurse to assist in stabilizing the arms, use an ankle or the foot vein, or D, refuse to do the vinang puncture for the patient's safety. The answer is B. If venom puncture is required from an elderly patient with obvious tremors of the upper extremities, the best solution is to ask a nurse to assist in stabilizing the arms. Equipment should be chosen carefully to avoid unnecessary traumas and prolong venom puncture process. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends and I shall see you all next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.